Hey, what's up? I'm Lindy. Today I'm going to be talking all about editing, which I have not done in so long on here, which is so weird because if you are already subscribed to me, you might know that I kind of like got my start on my channel by talking about photo editing. So, oddly enough, it's been quite some time since I've delved back into some photo editing. I'm really excited today to share with you guys how I edit the lighting of my pictures. When it comes to making editing videos, I do get stressed out because everything is different. Like, I don't use a preset. I don't use a filter. I do different stuff every single picture depending on how the picture looks. I'm going to try and talk about my mindset behind editing and what I use, like which apps I'm using and how I'm using them. If you don't follow me on Instagram already, you definitely should. I'll have it linked and everything down below. I always am posting over there and I'm also always posting um, like some behind the scenes with my pictures. I've also been posting on TikTok my behind the scenes and they've been doing super well. One of my TikToks is about editing out the power lines in the back. It has 140,000 views as of now. I posted it like two hours ago. Also, if my lips look overlined, it's because they are overlined. Oh well, what can you do? I don't have a top lip, so. This is Future Lindy introducing the sponsored part of this video. Thank you to Get Back Necklaces for sponsoring this video. I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about their company and their mission and what they stand for here. I want to show you guys my necklace. This was sent to me by Get Back Necklaces. Okay, so let me tell you guys a little bit about these babies. It is the St. Christopher like little charm baby. You might have seen these around. I always had but didn't really know the deal was until recently. So these have been exchanged since the 70s by like surfers and they're a symbol of good luck. St. Christopher is the protector of land and sea. Get Back Necklaces is family owned and operated in San Diego, California. You'll love to see that. And if you use the code LINDY10, you'll get 10% off your next order. This one that I have is like yellow and creamy and then I also have one that's bigger and it's like a light pink color and I love that one. You know me, I like to stack a lot of necklaces together and I like to just add little things like this in. As well as I love having things with meaning. All my jewelry has a meaning to me, so love to see this. The price range of these necklaces is super affordable too so I think it'd be a great present for like you and your friends maybe you all could have like matching ones or you all have like your own colors you know you kind of get everyone one is maybe like a going away thing like you know protector you know I think there's just a sweet gift idea they also make rings or chokers or you can like add a bunch of charms to one necklace I think that'd be really cute hit them up I'll have the link down below thank you guys again okay so I'm gonna show you guys the lighting edits behind like three of my more recent pictures so the first one is a picture I took today and I'll put the before up here on the screen that is a dark picture you know but here's the after I'll show you guys this is after I edited the lighting and everything I'm back. It's been like an hour and it's dark outside which sucks because it's snowing and it's so pretty and I wish you could see it. Also, I would just like to say that my TikTok is at almost half a million views and yes, I am being cyberbullied for sure. But it's okay. Kind of. <laughs> so I started off in Lightroom. So I'm going to go ahead and bring the exposure up quite a bit. And then the contrast, I'm going to come back to that. I don't really know what I want to do with that yet. Highlights, I'm going to push them down a bit. Shadows, I'm going to pull up and you'll see just how much of the photo that brings back but not too much because then it's like you know you kind of I don't know your eye goes to where your picture is the most um, like contrasted so I don't want to bring the shadows up too much but I want to bring them up a bit just to like kind of bring some details into my face so it's not just all completely dark okay whites let's see I'm actually gonna lift that up a bit just because I think it looks pretty and then the blacks this is again just kind of like shadows and highlights um, to make that richer I'm gonna push it negative 15 and then I'm going to pull the contrast up and then just add a little bit more exposure. So you can already see such a big difference like like that you guys. And that's the thing like people are in my TikTok comments like oh my gosh this takes so long and it's like really no like it doesn't take that long. Maybe I've just been doing it for a while so it doesn't take long for me. Anyway now we're gonna go to the color edits and I'm gonna start on the temperature. I like my pictures pretty warm but since this is a snow picture I'm not gonna do it too much because I would be like weird if it was all kind of like yellow tinted so just a bit of warmth and then a bit of the pink because I would also prefer my pictures to be pink tinted if you could not tell by my giant pink coat that's my fave so I like that. And then in the top right of the color edits you can see mix so if you click on that you can edit all the colors and let's see so for the red honestly I don't really touch red that much because it can kind of mess up your face and like start messing with your lips and I don't, I don't like that so that and then orange is like a little bit of my pants my skin and my hair, which is not my favorite thing. I don't really know why my hair is orange. Didn't really want that. But anyway, I'm going to lift that up a bit, actually. It, and again, this depends. Like, all my edits are different depending on what the lighting is for the picture. So sometimes I would push it down and make myself a little tanner. But right now, no. I feel like I'm a little dark in this picture. So I'm going to make it brighter. As for the yellows, there's, like, not really any yellow in this. But either way, I'm just going to desaturate it because sometimes that's my hair and I don't want it to be yellow. <laughs> not really any greens in this picture. I'm like moving the slider back and forth really fast to see if anything is registering as that color so I can like see what I'm doing. But there's like not a lot of color in this picture because it's like um, entirely white. So 
now this last um like magenta color it pulls my coat and i'm gonna just pull that up a bit in the hue towards like more red and then i'm gonna pull the saturation up because i like the coat next stop is effects i'm gonna go ahead and slide the dehaze option up a bit and clarity just because i think that kind of makes it really crisp all right so here's before and after on lightroom so now we're gonna save that and then open it up in snapseed so there was a time where I used to use Snapseed all the time when I first started my channel and then I kind of really laid off and was not using Snapseed as much. Well, I've lately gotten back into it because I feel like it really just makes a difference in pictures. So you go into your pictures on Snapseed and open up the picture you're editing, or this one in my case, and then I click on tools and then to an image and I'm probably going to play with the exposure again. I don't know if it's just me, but I feel like whenever you play with the exposure in different apps, like it affects it in different ways. Like some are, I don't know, some are good, some are bad. This just kind of overall brightens it a little bit more so I like that so I'm gonna leave it because again I like really bright poppy pictures a little bit of contrast just while we're here you know might as well mm, I'm not gonna mess with the saturation because I don't want to mess it up um ambiance okay so this if you slide it to the right that happens and if you slide it to the left I'm just gonna drag this down a little bit because I feel like it I don't know I don't even know what it does I just look at it and see I just look at it and see if I like it so I do highlights um I don't know I might push this down a little bit shadows might bring them up a bit. Warmth. Maybe a little bit of extra warmth again. And maybe some more contrast. So I'm going to actually lower some brightness. There we go. Next up on Snapseed is details. And I will just take the structure and the sharpening and pull both of those up just a bit. Just to give it like a little, little zing. But not too much because then you can... Some crazy stuff starts happening. Don't go too hard on those. I forgot to move over here so my screen recording was probably over my face just then. Next up is curves, and I go to the little button on the left. I don't know what that is. It's like a little circle with lines in it. And then I click luminance on the right, and I make the smallest little uptick over there, and then I bring the low part down. Does that make sense? I honestly don't know what this does. I saw this in someone else's video. I don't know the terminology for this, but I do that. I think it's the highlights. I don't know. White balance. I don't really need to mess with that, because that's like the temperature and the tint. So like the green or pink. We've already done that, so I don't need to mess with that. Next up, I'm going to take grainy film, and I like to edit X03, just like a touch of it, or X02. Let's do X02 for this one. So I'm going to get rid of the grain for now, and I'm going to take the style strength like all the way down, and then just add in like a touch of it. Like you literally can't even tell. Alright, so there's that before and after on Snapseed. I feel like I could have done less exposure on Snapseed and been fine, but you know, I, I do like it bright, so it's fine. Okay. Oh, one last thing on Snapseed. If you use the brush tool, you can take like the saturation brush. Um, I do like plus five and I'm just going to like brush this on the coat just to kind of give it a little bit of extra pop. Oh, maybe a little bit on my jeans too. Okay, fun. Now we're going to save that and that is how I do the lighting for that picture. Okay, so next up we're going to do a picture of my friend Lauren and I. Here's the picture. It's bland and embarrassing and when I take pictures and then I look back at like to go through them and I'm trying to edit them I'm like oh my god these are all bad and like even when I'm taking it I'm like these are not working out these are cringy I'm embarrassed and then I edit them and I'm like oh wait no I like it so it always just depends like on what I do in post really because I don't know it's kind of weird you know stand with your friend on the roof of a parking garage and just like kind of make like a smize at the camera kind of a weird thing to do but when you edit it you can give it a real vibe so first things first we're gonna open it in Lightroom you know how it is we're gonna try to recreate how I had it looking on my Instagram because the original picture not good. We're gonna start with some exposure, not too much. And then highlights, we're gonna push all the way down. Let's pull the shadows up. Pull the whites up a bit, just for some brightness, but not like exposure brightness. I don't know, that just gives it like a, a softer brightness. Let's pull the blacks up as well. And then contrast it. Okay, now we're in color. So, I'm going to do a pink tint, as always, and then some warmth, as always. Now into mix. This is where it's going to get weird because for this, I really wanted to bring the sky out. And, like, there's nothing. You, when you look at that, you're like, what sky? I know. It's non-existent. But we're going to try and find some, and we're going to try and make it work. Okay. So, not touching the reds because that made everything look horrible. Orange is, like, both of our hair and faces. I'm going to bring that up a bit for brightness. Yellow, whatever. There's not really any yellow in this pic. There's not really much green. Okay, so this blue, you can see, changes a lot. So, I'm bringing... This is hard. I'm going to saturate it all the way, I think. And then that 
I'm gonna take the hue this way and see how you can just really like map out certain sections of the picture okay and then I brought the luminance up as well I'm not sure if that's how it's gonna stay but that's how it is for right now so next up is the purple and you can see that's like that band right there in the sky so I'm gonna pull that all the way to the right there we go I'm starting to see how I did this I'm gonna pull the saturation up a bit I'm not gonna touch the luminance because you can see when I bring that up it's just like washes it out and when I bring it down it's like yikes <laughs> so we're just gonna leave that at zero and then let's see saturation all the way up and then what is this band going to do? Let's see. That doesn't really do anything to the sky. So I think that that's what I want for this picture for the sky and the colors. And then we're going to go to effects and again, dehaze and clarity. That made my face a little bit darker. So I'm going to go take the whites and lift them up a bit and maybe lift the highlights a bit. And yeah, a little bit. So that's how I would do Lightroom for that picture. And then I would save it and then take it into Snapseed. Okay, so now in Snapseed, we're going to go to Tune Image. I'm gonna bring the brightness up, contrast up, and now the ambiance. Let's see how this affects this picture. Okay, so for this one, I'm actually gonna pull the ambiance to the right a little bit. Not too much, because then it gets like, eh. You can, like, it's really just, I just play on these apps, you know? I just literally see what I think looks best. And it's like super therapeutic for me to edit, so. Okay, highlights, let's pull them down as well. Shadows, whoops. pull them up a bit that should be good for the tuning of the image and now details this is going to really come through for this one alrighty um, I just did a little bit with that same really super small curve type situation I don't even know what that does I'm literally you guys I don't know okay so then on white balance uh, I think it looks pretty good I don't want to touch the colors anymore with this um, Maybe the grainy film. That would be pretty, I think. Okay, so let's get rid of the grain. I don't know. I never really go into it wanting to put grain on it because you guys know I edit the crap out of my picture. So, like, it's probably going to get grainy anyway. So. Anyway, now let's take the style all the way off the filter and then pull it up just a bit. Yeah, that looks good. So, I do believe that that's how I edited this picture. I'm going to show you guys, like, a little trick how I got rid of the uh, light pole behind my head. So, I saved this picture. Save a copy. And then go down to Tools. Scroll down to Double Exposure. Whenever you upload that picture in double exposure, it'll be like aggressive on your picture or whatever. First, we're gonna slide the picture to the left or whichever way, you know, I'm just trying to mask that light pole with the sky next to it so that I can put it on top, you know? So anyway, let's do the opacity all the way up. Click the check mark, you click the undo, view edits, double exposure, and then click the paintbrush. And then whenever you go to paint, it's gonna be that sky that you moved over on top of it and you're just gonna paint that on top of your head. <laughs> And that still looks like a little splotchy, so I went to healing, and then I'm just going to, like, smooth the edges, which this, like, you might not be able to tell. I just could kind of tell. So, that's how I did that picture. Okay, so that angle we were at is canceled because I'm freaking tired and I don't want to stand up anymore. Okay, so let's do a couple more, maybe. Let's see. Let's just scroll through. I'm just going to scroll through my pictures and find a picture that's pretty recent. I think that, like, the main thing is just not being afraid to just freaking go for it if it's like the exposure or whatever it is like I feel like I just always am like what if we just went a little harder and then that's when it like starts kind of popping but also you can go harder and have it flop so I don't know you just kind of got to use your own judgment on that also look at my pants they're so cute they're from H&M ah, I love them they're like leopard print jeans honestly though I am going to unbutton the top button because I can't sit here with them buttoned but they're dumb cute they're like 30 online I thought they were on sale and I, I got them on sale in store, but I don't know. They weren't on sale when I checked online. But I'll link them down below anyway. And isn't this hoodie adorable too? I'm renting it from Rent the Runway right now. It's by Millie. I love it. I've worn it like so, so many times. I should probably just buy it, but I don't want to, so. <laughs> okay, so I've decided we're just going to edit like a more normal picture because the other two were like, like photo shoot type of pictures. And this is a picture of my friend and I at our formal. It's Lauren again. I already, you already saw Lauren, but here she is again. This is us at formal. This picture is pretty warm right off the bat. Okay, so... Here we are with the picture. Let's start off with a bit of exposure. Not too much because I felt like this picture was like pretty decently exposed. Didn't really need much contrast, I don't think either. Um, I'm gonna push the highlights down just a bit. Let's do the shadows. Let's bring them up a bit. Let's pull the whites up. And maybe we'll pull the blacks. Let's pull black up and then add some contrast in. That's cute, okay. So now for color. It's pretty warm, like I said, but it does look a little green, I think. I'm going to try and pull up the pink and see if I can, like, make that. Yeah, I think that looks good. Okay. Now, 
as for color mixing. With this one I actually am going to pull the reds a bit towards the like pinky side because my dress is like kind of new like lighter pink and then my lips go a little bit pinker when I pull it that way and I just think that that's cuter kind of enhances the dress. Um, maybe pull the saturation up a little bit on that. So orange, like the entire picture is orange, the background's orange, whatever. So I'm not going to touch the orange because the last thing I want to do is freak the entire picture up. All right, on to yellow. I am going to pull this all the way towards the red, like the more warm side of things, orangey. Um, desaturate it a bit and expose it a bit. Pull the hue a little bit back up, but not much. All right, green. So you can see the words changing behind me. Our friends made a really cute like Find You World backdrop, so that's that. I'm going to pull it just a little bit to the left, maybe pull the saturation up and the brightness up a bit just to kind of give it some, some zing. All right, and then some blue is like barely changing behind me. Yeah, you can't even really see the blue changing. Um, there's not really any of that purple in there. And there's not really any of that magenta. So that about does it for colors. And then dehaze, clarity. All right, let's save that and go to our old friend Snapseed. All right, so you can see the brightness now. Like I can up it on Snapseed a bit and it looks good. Up that and the contrast a little bit. Let's see what the ambiance does. Okay, I might pull the ambiance to the left a bit. Because I feel like it just ups the contrast. Maybe a little bit of saturation could go for this one. Just like a little bit. Because a little bit goes a long way, I feel like. Highlights. I don't know. I'm not going to touch the highlights. Might bring the shadows up a bit. Details. I'm going to up the structure and the sharpening. Curves. I'm going to do my little small bump at the top of the line. Ooh, that adds quite a bit of contrast. I'm maybe going to make that a smaller bump. Okay. There we go. And the luminance curve, you guys know. Okay. I might pull the temperature a little bit down actually on this one because it's such, it was such a warm picture to start with because it was like interior lights and stuff. So after everything, it looks a little bit extra warm. So I'm going to pull the temperature a bit down just a tad. Like, not even really that noticeable, but I can see it a little bit, so it makes me feel better to do it. Um, tint, a little bit of pink. There we go. Now let's see if a filter would look good. Not that one. <laughs> Maybe a little bit of XO3. Like, a touch. Alright. So, that's how I do that. Alright, so that's how I use Lightroom and Snapseed to edit the lighting slash colors in my pictures. I always get asked if I have a preset. I do not have a preset. I have thought about making presets, but I don't know, you guys. Like, I don't want to make something and then have it not be versatile and mess up someone's hair and mess up someone else's skin tone. And then, like, I don't, because I don't do the same edit for every picture. So I would kind of feel like a fraud almost selling something that wasn't as versatile as I would like it to be. So if I can figure out how to make that super versatile and how to like walk you guys through making sure that it works for you, then maybe. I would hate to have people buy something and then have it not work for them all the time. I'm sitting in bed editing this video. <laughs> Realized I never really said what I wanted to say as an outro. So I would just like to say thank you all if you watched this video all the way through. I really do appreciate it. If you've made it this far, you might as well subscribe. Am I right? <laughs>